in the house. Hey, everybody. Welcome. It's the, what's the motto? Be there, be square. <laughs> it's our usual Monday night lecture. And I'm Dr. Sean. For those that don't know me, we come up every Monday and do some kind of topic around the conversation of forgiveness. And it's typically around communication, which is my expertise. And how do you communicate better, more efficiently to foster intimacy and your own personal development and growth. And tonight's topic is a juicy one. It is forgiving without reconciliation. So many times we think if we have to forgive someone, we have to be in relationship with them. No freaking way, not even close. And we have a lot of myths in culture that we talk about with forgiveness, like forgive and forget, another myth. We're gonna be talking about that one next week. And uh, so forgiving without reconciliation is beautiful. It's a beautiful conversation. I see you guys are starting to show up. Hello, everybody, everybody. Yeah, I gotta be careful with the songs because uh, it's copyright issues. <laughs> All right, so tonight's about forgiving without reconciliation. And a um, couple of things. Always gotta do a little bit of my commercials as we get started. Hello, I see you, Clara. Let's see what's in the cases in the house. Barb's watching. Maria. Hi, Terry. Hi, Deborah. I love Florida. Lots of family in Florida. Mendy's watching. Hi, Sandra. I got your card. I'm going to show people your card. I see you guys are showing up. But too, thanks even for even putting up the link. Joyce is in the house. Welcome, 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 TT. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Um, okay, a couple of things. First thing I got to do, one of the... How we grow and do the things that we do, and a lot of what we do is forgiveness in the workplace, non-religious, non-partisan, to really foster teams, especially in the workplace. And um, one of the companies that I love is T-Mobile. I was, uh, I had a previous company for 20 years, I don't want to diss them, whatever. And uh, I had some conversations through, through leaders and supplier diversity, and I said, I'm going to try out your service. That was like two years ago, and I've had T-Mobile since. So, and I love T-Mobile. Uh, I just had an issue with my phone and stuff. I was with customer care. Her name was Elsie in Nashville, and she was exquisite. And one of the things about if I promote a company or a company is partnered with us, I have to love them and adore them, and I really do love T-Mobile. And if you're a senior like me, if you're over 55, I'm 57, um, you get a deep discount. So I love T-Mobile. So I'm just got to shout out T-Mobile. I also want to shout out at one of our sharing partners is Great Lakes Women's Business Council. Very active in that organization. Just getting them going on Facebook. I'll make sure I put up links for anything I mention. I just had to shout them out. Also, we've got brand new essential oil. I don't know if people are buying it. It's very exciting. Let me show you a picture of it. There it is right there. It even comes with a sterling silver forgiveness charm that you can take off and put on a necklace. And we've just started selling it, and it's low cost, it's $27, comes with a mask, it's free shipping in the U.S., and we are getting rave reviews on it. You guys, our Forgiveness Essential Oil is freaking stellar. So if you're inspired to get some essential oil, I hope you consider us, and you can go right to our store and buy it. And Sandra, who comes on every week, Sandra, I got your card in the mail today. I just have to show folks your card. There it is. I have it sitting up on my desk. It's just a beautiful card. And uh, she gave us a review. And when you do purchase one of our things, if you love it, please leave us a review. It really helps support our mission about um, bringing more forgiveness to the world. And um, this was Sanja's review. No leaks, love the royal blue color of the bottle. There's a reason it's royal blue because it stays um, fresh longer with that darker bottle. And adore the attached charms. We have a couple of charms on it. Very much like the label, because it's not on paper as most essential oils. It will never smear. It's We did that on purpose, because we wanted to make sure it stayed nice and clean and fresh. And she says, as, as I sit at the kitchen counter with my hubby, the sun has, given, has me forgiving him for the coffee stains he's leaving on my otherwise clean countertop. I give it a score of 10-10. Love it. Honest opinion. Because I asked her for her honest feedback, because we had just started selling it. So thank you so much. I so appreciate you. If you're inspired, get it. Um, also, too, we have apology necklaces. There's mine right there on me. It comes packaged like this. You get it? It's packaged like this. And then on the back is our tool, accepting the apology you'll never receive. 
you can't read it because it's backwards. And we're getting ready to do workshops. So save the date. Here on Facebook, we'll be promoting it. We're going to be doing Accept the Apology, You'll Never Receive Workshop. Last Wednesdays of the month, the first one's going to be on June 30th, so save the date. We should have that up later this week. I think it's, it'll be up by then. And it's going to be 7 p.m. The cost is $7. Seriously. And if for some reason you don't even have $7, make sure you message us. I'll make sure I really share that on Facebook. No one's going to get turned away because of money. It's just not going to happen here. It's just not. So if that's something that inspires you. And our workshops are so different than the lectures here. I'm just kind of yakking at you, giving you some ideas and some thoughts. In the workshops, you actually do role play. You work with people. The real emotions come up with forgiving people. And um, I love the workshops, so we're actually going to be launching it here. And the first one's June 30th. We'll do it monthly. Um, we also have greeting cards coming. Whenever I'm looking for, like, an apology card to say, oh, crap, I really screwed up, I never find good ones. So we're making our own. We're in the process of making them right now. Where I think we're going to sell a four-pack of forgiveness cards or to say I'm sorry. And um, so those are coming soon. All right. Anything that we got for sale, please hit the shop button here on Facebook and you'll find it. You can also go to our website at projectforgive.com. A couple other things as we get going. If your brand's banking new, make sure you tell us. Because when your brand's banking new, we want to welcome you and everyone else in the community will say I love you too. Um, and just so you know, the workshops, I'll give you instructions and directions as they happen, and I'll be posting them here on Facebook too, okay? They're actually going to be Zoom calls. The workshops that we do are so vulnerable that doing them live on Facebook is not an option. There's got to be a sense of extreme safety with the type of work that we do. And uh, once you start coming and check it out, you'll get it. And you're like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. And the new people are showing up. Hey, Christopher, Marge. Miss Garrett, Mr. Garrett, can't really tip MGRJ. Not sure what that's an acronym for. Welcome, so glad you're here. Okay, we also have a Joy as a Facebook group. If you want to be inspired by Joy, we also need you to post. If you're in the group, post stuff. We need you. <laughs> I just brought Aubrey in from our office. She's going to be helping managing the group, and um, we love, want to hear with the po we want to see the posts that you like to share too that bring you joy. Okay. Uh, last but not least, we are a training company. If you work for a progressive company that loves conversations on integrity, respect, forgiveness in the workplace, these are leadership conversations. We do DE&I, high pressure communication. Be sure to send them our way and I'll put a link up from our website to contact us. Okay, topic tonight, forgiving without reconciliation. Forgiving without reconciliation. I see you guys. Welcome the newcomers. Everybody's welcome. Yeah, Western Canada, are we talking like uh, Calgary area, we talk in Vancouver. Um, where are you from? Make sure you tell us because we even know Canada too. All right, so here's the thing. Forgiving without reconciliation, the topic tonight. Forgiveness and reconciliation are two different things. Forgiveness is a thing and reconciliation is a thing. And in my world, reconciliation is the cherry on top and not necessary for peace. So when you get ice cream and they're out of cherries, you're not gonna say, oh, I don't want the ice cream. You're gonna say, okay, I don't get a cherry today. That's how I view reconciliation because reconciliation is a choice and so is forgiveness. So it takes two people to reconcile, two people, two people actively working on the reconciliation and it only takes one person to forgive. So the onus is on you to play in that realm of forgiveness. Forgiveness to me is the real skill Reconciliation is if you choose it as well. And um, I found this phrase that I loved. Forgiveness is an interior discipline. Reconciliation is an outward process. I love that. Let me say it again. Forgiveness is an interior discipline. Reconciliation is an outward um, process. Uh, just so you know, everything I say, I've got notes already typed up. I will put them in the comments when I'm all done so you won't miss a darn thing, okay? Forgiveness is canceling a debt, not being in a relationship. Forgiveness is canceling a debt, not being in a relationship. And forgiveness for past wrongs does not guarantee a future relationship. They're very separate. And we've been taught since we were kids that forgiving and reconciling is just the way to go. No, 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 no. That, to me, is an immature way to look at forgiveness. And I don't say that to offend anyone. It's just what the research shows, and they're two very different processes. Um, 
And usually during reconciliation, the offender, whoever harmed you, betrayed you, hurt you, whatever, they have to demonstrate repentance. And the offender must be rehabilitated. So what the heck does that mean? And restoring a broken re relationship may also require restitution. And a couple more notes that I took and then I'll start talking. Actual reconciliation requires that both parties are actively working for the good of the other person and the good of the relationship. And here's the thing. You might have exquisite, exquisite intentions. You forgive them and you're like, okay, I'm open-hearted to reconciliation, but they're not carrying their weight. That isn't gonna work. So it's a process that you can keep reassessing as you move along, as you're determining if reconciliation is a viable option, okay? So separate those two, they're two different things. It's like compare, like um, having a son and a daughter and saying they're both the same personality. They're both your children, so they're in that wheelhouse of children, and they're very, very different. They have different personalities, different likes, same can be said true for forgiveness versus reconciliation. So how I thought I'd approach this tonight is two ways. We're gonna look at reconciliation when you've been harmed and reconciliation when you've done the harming. Because we're human, we have both going on, right? So we're gonna do this applying it to both. Reconciliation when you've been harmed, reconciliation when the other, when. Uh, you're the one who caused the harm because we all do things that we sometimes we do really stupid things that we need to ask for forgiveness and make restitution, right? Okay, and I have to say that I've rarely heard of people who, let's look at abuse just for one quick second, who behaved abusively and I, it's hard to see them spontaneously going to their victims and asking for forgiveness. And in most instances, they actually blame the victims or flat out deny that any abuse ever took place. So it's a complicated thing, right? So with that said, here's some examples of forgiving without reconciliation that you'd, re you'd recognize, okay? Childhood abuse, sexual abuse, ex-partner. Um, that's a complicated one. Actually, an old married partner. As a matter of fact, my grandson said to me, I have him, he's here in town in, in, uh, from Florida. And he asked me if I went to, Grandpa Jed is my first partner who was alcoholic. And um, we, I was married for like five years with that first marriage. I've been married now 25 years. And Draken's like, you know, did you, when she's get, he's getting ready to go visit Grammy Tammy, who is his second ex-wife, okay? And he said, did you go to their wedding? <laughs> and I kind of chuckled because he sees me be kind to Grandpa Jed now, my ex-husband now. He sees me be kind to his second ex-wife, Tammy, now. Um, so he's like, did you go to their wedding? I'm like, no, because <laughs> that would have been, you know, 20 something years ago and we hadn't gone through a forgiveness process yet. So to start having those conversations with 11, a little 11 year old is a really cool conversation to have. And you might have an ex-partner that beat you, that abused your children, that, you know, all kinds of stuff. Are you gonna reconcile? Probably not. And that's sometimes a very good choice. What about harm through drug or alcohol addiction? Um, some of us have gotten to the point where we do tough love with our children. They're 20 years old, they don't have a job, and they're using drugs every day. And we say, sorry, you're out of there. You're out of there. And um, also, if you're a former user of drugs or addiction, you have some restitution to make. You know, um, in 12-step programs, you know, how do you make amends and how do you form restitution? So your examples, if you have any examples of forgiving without reconciliation, make sure you put them in the, the comments or if there's one that you're sitting on the fence because I'm gonna address sitting on the fence tonight. Um, so in order to truly reconcile, if that's a choice you're gonna make, it involves acknowledging how you hurt the other person without any excuse or justification or they're acknowledging any hurt that they've done to you without any excuse or justification and the, the second, there's actually four places, four phases to this, actually five. Second one is really understanding how that hurt affected you or affected the other person. L number three, letting the person know how it made you feel and knowing, and so they can have access to your pain and actually see it in intimacy and communicating a genuine desire to change the behavior 
and then asking the other person for forgiveness or having them ask you for forgiveness and actually even providing some kind of restitution like oh my gosh I wreck you let me borrow your car I wrecked it I will pay the $500 damages let me know if there's extra money that needs to be paid to insurance if your insurance goes up those would be the type of restitution things like if someone borrowed your car and got in a car accident right Here's the other thing about reconciliation. Here, I got an itch, you guys. Hang on one second. I see you guys are showing up. Let me see if there's something I need to see what you're saying. Let's see. Yeah, I'm with you, Kenny. Let's see if you're saying something. What about a one-sided friendship and one person does all the asking and invites and the other person does nothing? Nothing. Sandy, I'll address that at the end because that's a great question and I have it on my list. Uh, let's see. Perfect. Glad you're here too. Just seeing if people are saying something that I need to address. Yeah, it is deep, Angie. I'm with you. Um, I'm so glad you're here, Nadine. Let's see if anybody say anything I need to pay attention to. Okay. Any comments? What if you hurt someone by what you said when you were sick in the hospital and out of it? He blocked me. I've tried to apologize. What do I do? Actually, that's a great example. And um, Suzanne, I'm going to use it when I go through a next series of stuff. We'll use that example. Okay, perfect. Okay. So here's the thing, here's, reconciliation takes time. It's not a one hit wonder and it's handled. It also depends upon how deep the grievance is or how deep the betrayal or hurt is. The process of reconciliation, of course, depends on the attitude of the defender, of the offender, the depth of the betrayal and the pattern of the offense. Is it something that keeps happening over and over? This means that I can forgive someone for damaging our friendship but maybe I don't feel safe enough to resume the friendship. And Suzanne, this might be a perfect example. Not saying that it's true, but maybe your friend that you said something when you were out of it, which is totally understandable, right? Doesn't feel safe in the friendship. I can appreciate that. And it doesn't mean that you're a horrible person and you did something horrible, you got it, okay? People have the feelings they have and that's just what's so. There's a trap though, there's a hook when you've decided not to reconcile. Let's say you say, okay, that's it. I'm done with this relationship. I'm gonna forgive them, but I'm not gonna reconcile. And then they say stuff like this. They might say, I guess you can't find it in yourself to be forgiving. <sighs> or they say, some Christian you are. I thought Christians believed in love and compassion. I wanna give you a couple of responses for that in reconciliation, um, in, in forgiving without reconciliation. Here's the thing. If someone says that to you and you decided not to go into relationship or deepen that relationship again, or you just want to take a break and they say something horrible like that, to me that's a horrible thing to say. I guess you can't find it in yourself to be forgiving. What I would say, if it's someone I'm not interested in reconciling with, I might say, yeah, that could be true. <laughs> because to debate them or go into the hook well, is actually fostering the possibility of the relationship. And if you truly are ready to say goodbye to that relationship, engaging in those kinds of very, very vicious kinds of communications will never serve you. It's hard not to respond because you get hooked, right? And so if you are hooked and someone says, what a Christian you are, I thought you believed in love and compassion. Yeah, I really am a Christian and I'm just picking Christian for this example, okay? I'm just the for project forgive is non-religious, non-partisan, and this is just one example, okay? And um, I guess, you, you know, some Christian you are, I thought Christians believed in love and compassion. I might say, yeah, I really do, and, and that's where I'm at. I am forgiving the situation. I'm just, that's just where I'm at right now with the relationship. That's just where I'm at. Yeah, I don't, I, it's just what's up. And it, there ain't no more to say about that. And you can say it like that. And you can say, I guess you can't fight it in yourself to be forgiving when they say it to you. Yeah, I appreciate where you're coming from. And uh, I do, I actually do forgive you. I really do. And then they say, but you know, we need to talk this out some more. No, I'm not, I'm not willing to do that. At least I'm not willing to do it now. Uh, in time, who knows? But right now, no, I'm not willing to do that. And that's it. It can be that simple, okay? Let me see what else I got on my list here. Now, but now let's say you're sitting on the fence, okay? Do you wanna be in relationship with this person? Lots of things to consider. 
um, I do have some signs that someone is genuinely wanting to reconcile. Because it takes two people to reconcile, right? It takes two people to reconcile. They accept full response, and everyone's they accept full responsibility for their actions. Instead of, since you think I've done something wrong, or if, if I've done something to offend you, those are not authentic, intimate conversations of restitution. When they say, if I've done anything to offend you, no. That's, that's actually your great red flag that you're spot on with not reconciling, okay? Um, somewhat, someone's genuinely repentant and wants to make amends, they'll welcome accountability from others. They'll welcome that accountability. And number three, they won't continue in the hurtful behavior or anything associated with it. They won't continue doing it. They'll really take it to heart. And they're, the, all their defenses are dropped. Number four, they drop their defensiveness. Can't you feel when someone's really opened their heart and they've dropped their defenses? You can really get present to that with someone. I can tell when someone's doing it on a dime that they're genuinely, genuinely interested in restitution. And the other thing they won't do is they won't downplay their hurtful behavior at all. They'll take full responsibility. And, um, and you won't doubt their sincerity and they won't need to um it's they do not resent doubts about their sincerity like let me reset let me say that again if you express well you know i want to make sure that you're truly being sincere about this they still won't be defensive if they're genuinely when they're genuinely sincere and deeply want to reconnect and re -re reconcile with you that defensiveness, and they won't, they won't even be triggered by or react of to you saying, I need to know that you're sincere, this is gonna take time. Those are very appropriate things to say to someone, especially someone that's deeply hurt you. And they'll make the restitution that's necessary, like paying for the insurance for the car if they cracked up your car, whatever, right? Yeah. I'm with you on the, on the sarcasm. Sarcasm is a toughie. You, with the people that you love, you can actually set a boundary of asking for no sarcasm with people that you love. And because sarcasm is actually, in many cases, sideways passive aggression. So it makes sense to me that you wouldn't like sarcasm. Someone that I deeply love and trust, if they're being sarcastic, I can laugh at that. But if there's stuff in the past or there's things going on and I don't trust their motives, sarcasm will never work. And it's okay to say, you know, I'm, I'm really sensitive to sarcasm, but you could try to limit it around me because I don't find it funny. To me, that's the same conversation as over tickling a child. You ever seen somebody over tickle a child and they're in agony? And I actually see that as extremely, extremely violating. It's no fun to be tickled when you don't want to be tickled. Um, and sometimes people will go overboard, especially with kids and keep tickling, keep tickling. And they're, they're at the point where they're crying. And the same can be held true about sarcasm. You can set a boundary. Please don't tickle Draken. He doesn't like it. Please don't. Our, our boundary is um, no body touching. That's a boundary we just have in our household. And actually, that's a boundary we have with all the grandkids. No wrestling, no touching each other. We have our own body boundaries. And it's done to create and foster connection, fun. And so everybody feels respected, right? I'll come to your, your, uh, your comments in just a second. Um, here, no, before I go into this next thing, let's see what you guys are saying because I'm going to address if you're sitting on the fence. Yep. The borderline personality disorder, you know, I'm with you, Debbie, on that. I've come to the place personally where I accept people where they are when they have mental health issues because that's a mental health concern. And I have a lot more patience and empathy around that than I do with just bad behavior, right? Let's see what you guys are saying. Yeah, blaming, shaming, and rejection sucks. I'm with you. Corey, this is a great example. What about denying your feelings of hurt and pain but having to continue the relationship? Better to keep boundaries and remove guilt? Yes, it's best to keep boundaries. My son shared something with me. Um, Let's see what I can say about that. He just recently set a boundary at work. He didn't like how he was being talked to by his bosses. It just felt bad. It's been building and building. And finally, he just said out loud, I don't like the way you're talking to me. It doesn't feel good. It feels terrible. And the response was a gaslighting response. Well, we treat everybody like this. No one else is complaining. It's all in your head. 
that's a typical devaluing, um, invalidation conversation and a lack of accountability, and I call that gaslighting. And his response was, I hear you, and my feelings are my feelings, and that's how I'm experiencing it, and that's what I want you to pay attention to, because when you say blank, it doesn't feel good, and I don't want you talking to me like that anymore. Well, feathers ruffled? Absolutely, feathers are ruffled. Look at the feather, feather ruffling that's happening with our uh, tennis pro, uh, Osaka. What's her first name? Gosh, you know who I'm talking about. She's doing some very brave stuff right now. She's very introverted. Asaka, what's her first name? Somebody knows it, say it in here. She just said she's not gonna do media interviews anymore. It's not good for her mental health. She's an extreme introvert. She feels so uncomfortable. She has so much anxiety. She goes through depression when she does these media interviews. And dang, what's going on there? The response has been poo-pooing, gaslighting responses from the French Open and all those folks. And then watching all the athletes stand up for her. This is a game changer. This is a game changer on mental health. Even the, the app Calm, they paid her $15,000 fine. I don't know if you know of Calm. Exquisite app around peaceful mental health to really support you. And they're like, no, this is exquisite that this 23-year-old woman is saying no more and she's setting boundaries. Is it perfect? No. Is it uncomfortable? Heck yeah. Is she doing it anyway? Yes, she is. And I'm, I'm just really impressed by her courage. That's like global conversations about setting boundaries and modeling them for her, what it's like for her, because everybody's experience is different, right? Let's see what else you guys are saying about this. Let's see. Yes. Christopher, you're spot on. You're spot on with this. I think it's Christopher that's saying that about your words don't impress me, your actions will. Spot on. I love that. Let's see. Let's see. I'm looking with Elizabeth saying, yeah. Well, I'm glad the relationship is over, Elizabeth. I know it probably doesn't, I know it probably feels absolutely horrible, especially after investing 25 years. Totally get it. Naomi, you're right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Franca. Thank you, Corey. Yep. Um, oh, Kathleen, that's a great, great question. What if the person refuses your apology or refuses to forgive you? This takes a lot of maturity. I've done actual lectures on this. What do you do when someone doesn't forgive you? Um, actually, I'll put the link up. Let me make a note to make sure I do that. I need a piece of paper that's not written on. There's a whole process to that. And the most gracious thing you can do is receive that. Well, and it takes a lot of courage and a lot of guts to do that, Kathleen. It really does. So let's say I've had people not forgive me before and the, you know, take the high road. It's hard to do, especially when you're hooked, especially when you want them to forgive you so bad in the reconciliation. You can say something like, well, I really appreciate your honesty and it makes sense to me. And um, thank you for that. And then dependent upon the relationship, reconciliation is a process. Maybe in six months, you send them a little card to say, I've been thinking about you and wondering if it might feel okay to have a conversation with me so I can just honor your process and see where you're at. That takes skill and exquisite empathy and leadership to be able to do that. Because Kathleen, if someone refuses your apology and refuses to forgive you, that's on them. It really is. And I know it would be nice, neat, tidy package if they forgave you and you'd have relief. I really believe it's a spiritual practice if someone doesn't forgive you because then a whole new thread of stuff for you to work through personally comes up. And um, that to me is the essence of personal development. When you're triggered in something or you feel something or something's incomplete, how do you practice being complete with incompletion? And those are high level skills. Hard to do, so uncomfortable. And I love the conversation of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Being comfortable with being uncomfortable, yeah. Perfect. Let's see if there's anything else you're saying that I need. <laughs> Paula, you're so sweet. Tennis people are awesome. Sandra, I'm with you. Sandra, make sure you go to the beginning of class because I talked about you at the beginning of class. Yep. So, Sophia, what do you do when people don't accept your boundaries? 
We've done a lot of talks on boundaries. I'll make sure I put the latest one up there. Let's put boundaries and no apology received. I'm gonna stay on reconciliation just to keep us on track, okay? All right. I'm just looking at what uh, Nancy's saying here, or Nadine's saying. She's in the late stages of Alzheimer's. Yeah, well, you don't call. Got defense, so I said, well, when hospice comes in, I won't be having people here then either. Oh, I gotcha. Anybody else ever said anything in defensiveness and, like, retaliatory? I've done it. I've actually talked to my husband this week. I've been retaliatory all week. I'm working on it. So I'm with you. Yeah, you lost your sister and son, so your emotions are really, I so get it. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, Nadine, if you want to private message me, I'll give you some ideas too around that, okay? Private message me here on Facebook and I'll address it for you personally. That's so precious that you're sharing that. I'm sorry you're going through that. Yep, with you said, that's the whole essence of the talk. Forgiveness and reconciliation are two different things. Let's see. Anything else you're saying that I... Any money? Yes, Valrita, that's a good one. Here's what I want to do for you to help you right in this moment. Um, Valrita is writing about disrespect and entitlement, which is a common complaint I get all the time, especially when they owe you money and are not acknowledge when they're wrong. The biggest thing, the biggest piece of advice I can give in this moment is to separate those two. Money is separate than entitlement and disrespect. Because if you gave them, or they owe you money, one thing I always say, never loan, never loan money to family members, give them money. <laughs> because that just messes up a relationship. Maybe we'll do a topic on money and family members and how to work that out. Um, I'll put up the boundary one and I'll put up the no, reply, no apology receiving. Valrita, that should probably help with that. Let's see. Yeah, the ghosting stuff is horrible, Sophia, I'm with you. What do you do when a family member won't accept responsibility for the transgressions personally afflicted on you? So that's perfect, Norma. That's a perfect distinction between forgiving them and reconciling with them. And some people just can't do it. They can't. Do you know people like that? No matter what, they can't even say sorry for bumping into you let alone saying sorry for something that deeply hurt you. And it's that same conversation of trying to get, have a family member accept responsibility for something they're never gonna accept responsibility for. And it's like going to the hardware store to get milk. Going to the hardware store to get milk. You aren't gonna find milk at the hardware store. And then knowing this information, the part where it gets kind of insane for you or for me is when we keep trying to get it when we know they're not going to give it. It's like running on a treadmill hoping to run five miles. And so something new needs to happen. And it could be limiting time, how, you spe how much time you spend with them. It can be deciding to have a really intimate conversation like, you know what, I'd like to get this to clear the air and unpack this a little bit if you're willing. And I'm thinking I need an apology from you, Mary because this is not complete for me and what I really need is an apology. And are you willing to have that conversation with me? And Mary might say, I'm just making Mary up for you, Norma. Mary might say, no, I'm not willing. That's valuable information. The, the biggest problems we have about reconciliation versus forgiveness is we don't believe people. We keep trying to change them, that they're gonna do and give us our needs. And when we're so focused on trying to change other people, we're not addressing what's really going on here. And this is where we have the power. So people can either do it or they can't. And sometimes they grow and in ways and they can do it over time. That's why reconciliation many times is a process, right? Let's see, you are so welcome. How do we handle it? Except, yep, I'm with you. Perfect. Maybe that's just a topic all on its own, Terry, and um, with that one with the family members not accepting. Just look and let's see. One person in my life I forgave, but I no longer wish for some life-altering abuse was at the core. Catherine, I, I'm totally with you. Uh, my stepdad was my sexual abuser as a child. 
I never reconciled with him. I did my forgiveness work. He later died. I do believe in karma myself. He died a very horrible death. And um, I never reconciled with him. That wasn't going to happen, right? Forgave my ex-husband, alcoholic, no contact with the children. I even had times during my 25 years married to my husband now where I allowed him to even come over on Christmas. His alcoholism has so disintegrated his mind, there's no connection. I only, well, if I talk to him once in a while, only be early in the morning before he's been drinking and his brain has deteriorated from the alcoholism, right? So there's no reconciliation there. And I'm cool with that, it's all good, right? With you, especially around abuse. Yes, Eth Ethelin, let me say it one more time, because this is a great thing to say before I go into what to consider if you're on the fence for reconciling. Let me just go to the top, because they're great quotes. Hang on, stand by. Reconciliation is the cherry on top of ice cream. It's not necessary for peace. Reconciliation and, pe and forgiveness are two very different things Two people it takes to reconcile, only one person to forgive. You only have to worry about the forgiveness part and then decide if you want to reconcile. And then it takes two people to do that. Forgiveness is an interior discipline. Reconciliation is an outward process. Two very different things. Forgiveness cancels a debt. It's not about being in a relationship. Okay? All right. They're very, very, very different processes. Let me see any other comments that I... Yeah, when someone, when someone misbehaves with others, how can you behave without creating disagreement? Samira, I'm, I'm going to guess just a little bit. Let's say someone else misbehaves, whatever misbehaves means. Let's say they do something to your sister and you don't like how they talk to your sister. That conversation is between them and your sister. What you can say is something like, wow, I feel really uncomfortable how you're talking to my sister, Shika, right now. That, I feel really uncomfortable. I want to disengage from this. Taking ownership, not taking care of her, acknowledging that you're really uncomfortable with what just happened. The thing is, when you voice stuff, when you set boundaries, when you want to have an authentic conversation, disagreements are going to happen. And it's this ability to be comfortable with the discomfort because we so avoid discomfort as humans because we want everything to be nice, neat, and tidy, and clean, and, and, and that's just not life. Life is way, way, way too messy, right? Let's see, anything else that I need to address before I go into this content? Oh, Paula, I so get it. Um, and so Paula, one of the decisions I made, my mother recently died, and my, I had came from a very, very, painful childhood, okay? And uh, just me and my mother on her deathbed that last year of her life, I decided to forgive her and talk with her. And it was hard. I learned a lot about myself. And this is about you. What is in best interest for you when she actually passes? And so that's great things to think about if you want to go that journey, because that is a difficult journey um, it's a difficult journey and it takes a lot of courage. Let's see. Okay, so Kim, what do you think about someone apologizing and then repeating the same transgression over and over? Give, if you gave me an example of the transgression, maybe it's screaming at you at the top of your lungs. I'm just making crap up, okay? That's a deal breaker for me. You know what, John? I've asked you repeatedly not to scream at you. It's just, it's a line in the sand for me. What I'm noticing is I need to take a break from the relationship. I need you to get that this isn't going to work for me. I need to take a two-week break for right now, put in your time frame, whatever that looks like, and go from there and let it be a process. Because when someone apologizes and does the same trans transgression over and over, that's not an apology and that's not reconciliation. That's repeated abuse and actually it's more about you allowing it than it is about them doing it. Got it? Let's see. Perfect. Selena, that's a great one. How do you deal with a jealous stepdaughter? My biggest advice, and you're going to hate it, <laughs> depends on how old the stepdaughter is. If she's five, get in counseling and learn how to be an exquisite stepmother or take some step parenting classes because those kids are counting on you and your skills. 
Step parenting is so hard. Actually, that's another topic. How do you parent as a step parent? I learned so much about step parenting. What to say, what not to say, when to engage, when not to engage. That's a journey all on its own. And that's a journey, okay? Perfect. Let's see, Samira, let's see. I was in a professional meeting and someone was just bombing the presenter. I don't know what that means. Do you mean like like um, cat calling them or shouting out? So there's depending on our personalities, this is how we deal with it. Everyone deals with it differently. This instance of someone was cat calling someone and I was sitting in the room, I, I'm a brave soul and I've got a big voice and big energy. I take up a space in a room. I would stand up personally and say, hey, you need to stop it. Stop doing that or leave. This doesn't feel good. And you're interrupting and you're actually impacting my enjoyment of this presentation. I would do that. Also could be, there's many scenarios. You could walk back to the back of the room and ask somebody to support or ask this person to leave the room. There's lots of ways to do that at a professional meeting. You guys are asking some great questions. Let's see. All right. Lots of questions. There's so many tonight, you guys, I can't get to them all. This tells me we need to have this topic from another take, another time. Um, you're welcome, Elizabeth. Yep, okay, so let me finish up. I'm, it's already 7.10, I typically go about 30 minutes. I'm noticing though that the depth of the lectures are going a little bit deeper, which I'm appreciating. So if you're on the fence, reconciling whether, what are you considering? Be honest about your motives. What is your motive? to reconcile. Is it to get your neediness handled from when you were six years old? We know sometimes when we're just needy and we just want to reconcile and get rid of guilt. What, what are your motives, really, to reconcile? And be humble in your attitude. You know when you're being humble. You know when you're being righteous. Be, and here's the other thing with reconciliation, especially if someone harmed you. I fully believe we all participate. So I could demand an apology from my husband, but I know I contributed in some way. I always do. It takes two to tango. It always does. Someone might start it, but I can get hooked and participate. So being willing to admit the ways that you participated to the problem and being honest with the offender, like they want to reconcile. You know what? I don't know what I want to do right now, Charlie. I need to process this a bit. Can we maybe talk about this in a month. Let me just take a month. I'm watching someone I deeply admire in business right now. There's a lot going on in communication within that organization. She's about to tell the team that she's taking a month break because there's so much pain right now, a lot of anger, and she's having a hard time processing. So she's about to tell everybody, I'm taking a break for a month, which I think is so cool. Very similar to what Naomi Osaka did. I need to not do this. Um, and be, be objected about your hesitancy. If you're considering and you feel hesitant, hesitant um, perhaps you have good reasons to be hesitant to reconcile. Um, and sometimes repeated conf confessions or offenses of the, same make of the same nature, like folks were mentioning, it's hard to rebuild trust. It's very valid. And clearly define your reasons for doubting your offender's sincerity, because it may take quite a while for that to be recreated, especially if the offense was so offensive. Be clear about the guidelines for restoration if you get to that point or when you get to that point. And the biggest thing is being realistic about the process. Change takes time, and it's also hard work. Is this a relationship that you're considering reconciling with that's really worth the effort? I do the same thing when I'm considering what companies I want to work with. I'm 57, I pick and choose the companies I want to play with. Are they progressive? Do they deeply care? Are they involved in diversity, equity, inclusion? Where do they put their philanthropy? Do I like the leadership? Those are all things I consider before pursuing a company because I, when I pursue a company, it's a long-term endeavor. Reconciliation is a long-term endeavor. Is it worth the investment? And by looking at those things when you're considering, that really helps you figure out if this is something that you want to do. And don't do it lightly and give yourself time. You know what? I need to think about this for a little while. I need to process this for a little while so you can really listen to yourself. You are worthy of listening to yourself and taking as much time as you need. Granted, the person on the, on the fence that says, well, I don't want to wait a month, 
that's also giving you red flags of like, wow, okay, they don't want to look at this and allow the unpacking process, allow for intimacy. They're actually helping me decide is what they're doing, right? And it was mentioned earlier, forgive, I don't know who mentioned it, about a balanced relationship. It's worth recognizing here that some damage occurs in relationships that are out of balance, like maybe a friendship in which one person is more needy and the other one comes to the rescue all the time, or you're the person who's always generating events. I used to be that person. All my friendships have changed, especially since COVID. I don't generate that stuff anymore. I'm looking for cycles of reciprocity and giving and receiving in my friendships. So my friendships are naturally shifting. I don't know if you've noticed this yourself during COVID. And with reconciliation, with a balance of relationship, it requires sometimes a complete reconstruction of the friendship, a complete reconstruction. Like if this is a friend you wanna stay with, hey, here's the deal. I'm the one that always has the card parties. I'm always inviting everyone. When are we gonna do it at your house? I need to know that you wanna do this with me because it's feeling burdensome over here and I'm feeling actually disappointed in our friendship. Do you have a friendship that you can be that honest with? I do. Those are the friendships that I, th that I thrive in, absolutely thrive, okay? All right, someone's about, oh, did I mention prizes at the very beginning? I didn't mention prizes. I always give away prizes and I'm about to give away a prize. Okay. Here's the prize today. Here's the, here's the deal on the prizes and one person's gonna win. I'm gonna give you the parameters how to win. You're gonna win right now. Someone's gonna get these four things. Stop pain gel, it's pain relief gel. Here's what it looks like. Let me show you what it looks like right here. This stuff is awesome from Stop Pain. They gave us this, so I'm gonna put it in a package. You're also gonna get a Merck Animal Health Kit. Scissors, band-aid stuff for your health, uh, for your pet, to help with your pet. I'm also gonna throw in one of our Kindness is Contagious masks. And for the first time, I'm gonna throw in one of our charms. We have sterling silver charms that come on our forgiveness oils. Let me show it to you really close up. Let's see. Let's see, I got a messy desk here. Let's see. Put it here, or let me do it like this. Let me flop this around. Can I flop it around? Here it is, you can see it. Ooh, there we go. Forgiveness charm. It's sterling silver and you can put it on whatever you want, okay? Someone's about to win this package. You must be in the U.S. Forgive the parameters about U.S. because it's cost prohibitive to send it outside the country. Sometimes it's 30 bucks to mail it to Canada and that's just not gonna work. So, you have to be in the U.S. to win. Typically, I give you a phrase or something to say and the, usually the first person that it shows up in my feed wins it. What I've noticed is some people aren't as fast at typing, so here's the deal. I'm gonna tell you something to type in, and then the 10th one that shows up in my feed, everybody's feed shows up different. So I will just start saying what, what number you're in. I, the 10th person to post this in the feed is, how about the word just love? Start typing in the word love, hit enter. The 10th person in my feed that put in the word love is gonna receive this package. You must be in the US. It's not a fair process because some of you will show up in different order on someone else's feed. We're going by my feed. There's number one, Susan. So I've got one so far. Debbie says love two. Thank you for the star, Sandra. I got two. Christy says is number three. Elizabeth's number four. Terry's number five. You can play twice. You can do it as much as you want. And you can win as much as you want. Shelly is six. Corey is seven. Brett, number seven. Number ten's the winner. You're welcome, Kathleen. Martha is seven. Getting closer. We're almost there. Number eight is Phyllis. Number nine is Elizabeth. Here's the winners. The next one. Sherry, it's you. Sherry Nova Bronick. It's you, babe. You won. Message me here. I'm assuming you're in the U.S. because, that, oh, Sandra, you're number 11, so you're close. So, uh, Sherry, what you do is message us here on Facebook. There's only me and Hailey who runs my office that sees any messages. I need your mailing address and your email. We will never send you emails that you don't sign up for, promise. The email is so you can track the packaging. 
and um, the addresses so we can mail it to you. And if you want to put both those in there, you can also tell me if you want a white or a black mask because we have white and we have black and they say kindness is contagious. You can also get those at our stores. And if you end up purchasing our, uh, our essential oil, I'll probably give essential oil away next week, make sure you give us a review and even let us know how you really like it. Um, we're getting rave reviews on it. We really spent the time, energy, and research in, um, into our essential oils. They're, they're absolutely exquisite, okay? Next week, next week topic. Forgiving is not forgetting. And did you know, as a matter of fact, our brains are not built to forget. We are biologically hardwired to remember pain, okay? So forgiving and forgetting, like someone who cut you off on the road, is easier said than done. Forgiving someone that abused you, molested you, murdered your son, that ain't gonna happen. And it's based in our biology. And when you start really seeing these myths, it gives you a lot more freedom and forgiveness because forgiveness is not forgetting and we're gonna really look at that. Forgiveness is a spiritual, personal development and leadership function. Forgetting is a biological function. They're very distinct. So we'll take that same approach next week, okay? Biggest gift you can give us is to share us. Whether you share our posts, whether you share our articles, when you share us, you make a huge difference for us with our corporate partners like General Motors. And um, thank you for supporting us. Make sure I get that that mess that mail from you for our, our winner, and um, I will see you guys next week. Mwah! Big love. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.